Hi everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live this week. My name's Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, whether or not you're watching with me live, watching the replay or perhaps watching on my YouTube channel later on, I'm grateful that you are here. So thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so um, I am a few minutes late. I have been having a lot of fun sorting out old photos. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit um, in a little while. Um, but before that, let me give you um, some news. Now, before we get to that, let me just call um, up this live on my iPad so that I can see all of your comments there. So if you just give me a moment and I'll bring this up. And we will close what I was doing before. So I have spent um, the last oh, several hours going through old photos, which is always a lot of fun. Um, going through my, um, my family's photos, so my children, sorry, oh, I've got a gone into the wrong thing hang on a minute and then um, going through photos of my my family growing up so yeah really lovely memories there okay so we are let's see let's see there we go great okay I can see all of your comments now now let me just tuck my cord behind there to keep that out of my way got my um, phone plugged in so that I um, have plenty of power hi everyone hi Tina Megan Tracy Julie Renee thank you all for being here it's great to have you joining me today how was your weekend so um, um, we all know the situation in Sydney for those of us that are, are in Sydney uh, we're having a little bit of a quiet time right now so spending a bit of time at home um, great time to have a look at some of those old photos as I've been doing this morning so um, we're going to talk about that today we're going to be talking about photos um, and some memory keeping so we're going to do something a little bit different today which will be awesome so I've got some awesome um, products to show you but before we get to that let me um, just find out um, how your weekend was what have you been doing have you been doing some crafting let me know in the comments I'd love to hear about what you've been doing um, I had a lovely day off yesterday Sunday's usually my my only day off through the week the rest of the week I'm working um, Ah, you reckon you're not far behind us, Megan? Okay, so you must have a few cases rearing their ugly head up there too, have you? Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, hopefully it will only be short term this time. Hopefully we can get rid of it and um, everything will settle down fairly quickly. So I think we've learnt from the, the past 12 months or, well, what, do we, what would we be? Almost 18 months, 15 months, 18 months. I think at March last year it started. Yeah, so probably about, what is that, about 15 months or so. Hopefully we've learned a lot from that time and um, hopefully, um, yeah, everything can be sorted out quite quickly. For those of you that don't know, um, if you're watching from overseas, so Sydney and Greater Sydney has just gone into a um, stay-at-home order. So um, because of COVID, we've had some um, cases that have been around and so we're all just keeping ourselves safe at home right now and just going out for essential things that we need to do um, but i sent my husband this morning he had to go to the bank anyway so i said to him while you're out can you go to the post office for me please <laughs> so <laughs> better that just one of us is out than than two of us so yeah um ah you've got another two community traces up there last night megan oh no good no good at all um, Julie said she had a quiet weekend, had to cancel your mum's birthday dinner on Saturday till another time. Oh, sorry to hear that. But I've been doing some cards and scrapbooking. Fantastic. That's awesome, Julie. Great to hear that. But, um, yeah, a bit sad when we've got to cancel events. Um, our neighbour actually had her wedding, or our neighbour's daughter, had her wedding scheduled for yesterday, Sunday, which was the last day 
um, during this lockdown that um, weddings are allowed to occur and thankfully she was able to still have her wedding yesterday um, she just got in on the cutoff date well that was the date that was already booked in so um, yeah so they were very blessed in that but I do feel for others that um, are going to have to move their their dates. That'll be really um, heartbreaking for them. So yeah, just keep all those people in mind. Now, in saying all of that, let's just remember that these times, um, a lot of people are, you know, finding um, the stay-at-home orders, you know, a struggle and finding COVID struggle and stressful. So let's keep everyone in mind and let's get those cards sent out now. Um, you know, we do need to keep ourselves safe, but the postal services are still running. So if you're able to um, send out some cards to people who might be doing it tough or just need to know that you are thinking of them, um, get those cards in the mail if you can, um, safely, keep yourself safe. Uh, yeah, and just get those, give, you send out those encouragements to people because um, some people really, really need that. So, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? With our card making is making those beautiful projects to then um, pass on to others to brighten their day. So, yeah, so I hope that you're all able to do that. Now, while we are at home, there's lots of things we can be doing. We can be doing our card making. We can be doing, sorting out our craft room, um, looking through our photos as I was doing today and, and do a little bit of um, memory keeping or scrapbooking. Um, we can do all different sorts of things. Um, even if we have children or grandchildren with us at home, um, we can be doing little um, projects with them as well using our stamping products. Um, and even if you just use a black ink pad and you stamp images for the children that they can then color in and cut out and they can make little pictures or make their own cards or, or projects, um, then that's great too. You can do that. You can even practice with your children. If you have young children or grandchildren, um, you can practice with them with their colors with their counting you might have some punches like I've got some animal punches here I've got some cats and I've got a cat and a turtle and a whale and then I've got other shapes I've got flowers and I'm looking to see what I've got here um, ice creams and jars and I've got lots of labels and then of course we've got all of our dyes too. those of us that use dyes so you can cut multiples of those in different colors. You can do colors with your children and counting. Um, you can make all sorts of little games out of them, make up game boards out of some cardstock and um, use some of those punched colored pieces to make up little games, even like a snake and ladder game. Um, if you've got some dice at home or something. Yeah, lots and lots of things that you can be doing. Um, you just need to think outside the, the box and um, get creative. So. That's what we love. If anyone's got any great ideas, pop them in the comments um, because that might help others as well. <clears throat> I'm going croaky, excuse me. <clears throat> Daubers are also great for little ones to play with with colours. So um, if you have some coloured ink pads, you could get out some daubers um, for the children as well. And they could do little paintings and pictures using your daubers and your inks. So all different sorts of things. Just get creative. Um, I'm sure that you can all think up some great activities for the kids while they're home on school holidays or if you have little ones that are home too. Um, so my children started doing craft um, oh, way back when. Like I started, um, I really got into card making and scrapbooking when my son was about three but my children before that were doing a lot of painting and things like that that too so I always had them doing something um, creative and make even making things with play-doh like that's creative too um, and building things building cubbies and all sorts of things stickers sticker books um, my kids loved their sticker books and we had the the you know the traditional scrapbooks like the they're just like a big a3 pad of um, like a book of um, paper um, they would put their stickers in there and they draw in there and all sorts of things. So lots of great ideas um, that you can do. So anyway, yeah, if anyone's, if anyone's got any other great ideas, pop them in the comments because other people might find them um, handy as well. 
So let me give you a little bit of Stampin' Up! news and I'm excited what we're going to be playing with today. So I'm excited to share that with you. Um, some of the products we are going to be using today are available still in the Lance Last Chance product sale. So you can get them at a discounted price. Um, they are still available until the 30th. So we've got two days. What's today? The 28th. Yes, so until the 30th. Um, and then on the 1st of June, the uh, 1st of July, they'll be gone. So be sure if to check out the Last Chance um, product sale, especially after this live, after um, you see what we're playing with today, because some of those products you might decide that um, you would like as well. So remember to check that out. There's still a lot of specials there as well, things that are still available. So be sure to go and check that out today in my online store. Um, now, I've got some exciting news on the 1st of July until the 2nd of August. Stampin' Up! has got a designer series paper sale on um, uh, specific designer series papers. So there's nine packets there to choose from, which are reduced by, by 15%. So the packs that were um, $20, which is most of these ones shown here, will be reduced to $17.00. And then we've got the In Good Taste um, designer series paper, which I've got out. I might play with some of that today as well. Um, this one is a bigger pack, so it was. Um, it was. It's normally. Third, I'm just trying to see the. I haven't got my glasses on. <laughs> it's normally in Australia thirty-seven dollars. It's going to be reduced to thirty-one dollars forty-five. So that's a great saving. So I'm going to get um, some of the designer series papers that I don't have yet. And I'm also going to get an additional In Good Taste designer series paper because that's one that I use the most. And I just love all those textures in that one. So be sure to look for that on the 1st of July. So that'll be on Wednesday. Is that right? Wednesday? Thursday. Sorry, I'm getting my days mixed up. Thursday, that designer series paper sale will start. So great for your card making, scrapbooking, memory keeping, memory journaling, um, anything that you would like. So yeah, so I'll tell you which ones will be on special. So it'll be Beauty of the Earth, um, Bloom Where You're Planted, Hand Penned, In Good Taste, which I mentioned, in the Wild, which is the one with the tigers and the cheetahs on it, which is awesome. I don't have that one yet, so I'm going to get that one. Pansy Petals, Sweet Symmetry, Tidings of Christmas. So there's a Christmas one in there if you want to um, get that now. Perhaps you like to start your Christmas cards early, or at least you could get it now and put it aside ready for when you start your Christmas cards. Um, and then you're a peach. Now with the you're a peach, um, just to let you know, I actually have a class on offer at the moment with using the You're a Peach Suite. And you can find that in my events section. The um, deadline for ordering for that one is tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow or Wednesday? It might be Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday, the last day of the month. Oh gosh, I should have checked that before I went live. <laughs> It's either tomorrow or Wednesday. Anyway, check it in the events. It's a really beautiful suite. And this is a specialty class because we are making 3D items in this class. So I've got um, two fancy fold cards and I've got two 3D items. Now, normally in my card, in my classes or my um, monthly classes, we do three card projects. But this one is different. We're doing two fancy fold projects and two 3D items as well. So you get four projects in this class. So it might be a longer class. Um, and we're going to be doing a lot of um, scoring with our paper trimmer and um, cutting and things like that. So it's going to be super fun. So look out for that one. It's an awesome class. I'd love to have you along. Oh, thank you so much, Julie. Julie, just let me know Wednesday is the cutoff date. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, and Tracy's got some ideas here. She says one game her grandchildren like to play is matching games. Thank you, Tracy. That is a great idea. So she stamps all kinds of Im images on large pieces of paper. Then she stamps the same images on sticky notes and hides them around the house. They have to try, they have to find them and stick them over the images on the large sheet. That's brilliant, Tracy. I love that. 
great idea. Thank you so much for that. That is awesome. Hopefully some of you will be able to um, use that idea of Tracy's. That's a great idea. Fantastic. All right, so the other thing I wanted to let you know was about, now I've mentioned it the last few weeks, was about our kit collection. Um, Stampin' Up! has a new kit collection which launched at the beginning of June. So they've been around for nearly a month now. Um, the 10 kits are still currently available. Last I checked yesterday, they're still currently available. Each kit is only available while supplies last. Um, but there will be new kits coming out in time as well as these ones sell out. Um, there'll be new ones that will come in. So with the kits collection, I'm going to be holding every month a creative kit night on a Friday once a month at 7.30 for those that purchase their kits through me. So if you would like to um, join in on that, I've already posted the event for the one on the 30th of July. So if you want to have a look at that, that's got an ordering link in there as well. Um, you can use that ordering link to order your kits and then that way I know too that you are um, would like to come along to my um, kit creative night. It's real creative kit night. I said that back to front. It's a really laid back fun evening where we can just relax together, chat while we craft and it's via Zoom that one. So that's a live event via Zoom. So that's not a pre-recorded one. So that's lots and lots of fun. Now, if you haven't already seen the um, flyer for the kits and you would like one of these, let me know and I'd love to send one out to you. Just gives you a little bit of information about the kits. It doesn't show all of the kits in there. It just gives you a little um, snippet, a sneak peek of some that are currently available at the moment, at the time of me filming this. Um, because as I said, each of these kits is only while supplies last. So the kits are very affordable and there's two different types there's um, the stamping kits and they will include your little ink spot your stamp set your block as well for your stamps and all of the other bits and pieces that you need to put together your um, projects including instructions now they're $33 so they're a great price um, and each one makes a different amount of projects and different sizes. So you just need to read the information when you go to my online store. Just click on the kit that you're interested in, scroll right down and read all the information to see what's included and how many projects are in that one and the size of them and things. And then there's the um, non-stamping kits. So they're great to use with children. Um, they're great for new stampers, adults as well. I've even got some of them and I love them. I love this one with the butterflies and all the beautiful rainbow colors. This is one of the non-stamping kits and it's actually one of my favorites. Um, super easy to put together. Anyone can do it if they have crafted before or not. And the non-stamping kits, again, contain everything that you need to put together the kit. Um, there's no stamping involved in that one. Um, so these non-stamping kits are $22, uh, $21. I always say that one wrong, $21. So $33 and $21 are the prices for the two different kits. Very affordable, great for gifts as well. Great for the school holidays, great for lockdown periods too when we're all stuck at home because we can just order online and have it delivered to our door. Don't have to go out anywhere to go and get it. And, um, and then it will give us something to keep us busy and then we can send them out to people to brighten other people's days so um, kits are great if you want to purchase them make them up now in the holidays or if you'd like to join my um, monthly online creative kit night then I'd love to have you along to that as well hey Athena great oh you're still working <laughs> oh. Well, I'm glad that you're able to watch while you're working, Athena. That's really good. Hey, Glenda, how you going? Yeah, good Good that you could be here live. I'm great. I'm glad that you caught me. Sorry, I'm getting my tongue tied now. I've been talking already for a little while. <laughs> now, one last thing I wanted to let you know was I still have my In Colour Club running. If you are interested in getting all of the In Colour um, products if you love those new in colors that came out this uh, this year for 2021 to 2023 I have an in color club it runs across five months and you can get all of the in color products over those five months and I send them out to you gradually so at the top of my um, 
Facebook page, my Facebook business page. Um, that'll, that's pinned at the top. You'll see that there. And um, all the information is there. You can just click on that link. It gives you all the information and the registration form is there too if after you read all the information you would like to sign up for that. Um, all the information looks like this and then there's a second page as well and then there's the attached um, uh, registration form. So if you would like um, to, if you love all of those in color products, but you want a more affordable way to get them and spread that cost out, out over the five months, this is a great way to go. If you have any questions about any of that that I've mentioned today, feel free to get in contact with me and um, I would be happy to answer any of your questions. So you can get in contact with me either through Messenger um, or you can um, send me a text or give me a call my um not my contact details are in my bio or you can contact me via email which is mandy's papercraft creations at gmail.com so okay so that is all the news for this week now let me remind you that joining stampin up at any time is a great time um, I just had a new team member join in the last few days, which is super exciting. Um, she saw the value in the starter kit and um, she decided to join to get those added um, products and then enjoy the 20% discount on top of that for all of her future orders. So super exciting. It's only $169 for that starter kit and you can put whatever products you like from the current catalogs. Um, even from the last chance products from the clearance rack whatever you like you can pop in there in your starter kit and the best thing is you actually get up to 235 dollars in value so you can choose up to 235 dollars worth of product and still only pay 169 dollars plus you get free shipping on that um, stand uh, starter kit order as well which is super awesome and Stampin' Up! will throw in some catalogs and other bits and pieces for you as well as a bonus so you get them too and then after that you'll save 20% discount on all of your um all of your stamping Stampin' Up! products which is awesome now not only that um not only the fact that that is great value um but for me joining Stampin' Up! was one of the best things that I did one of the best decisions that I made and I just love the Stampin' Up! community. The people that I have met are just amazing and I've met people from all around the world. Um, even my team that I have now, I have a growing team and my team are just wonderful. They are such beautiful people. We've become such wonderful friends um, and we have a lot of fun together. We do lots of fun stuff together. Um, a lot of it online and when we can meet in person we we do meet up in person as well thankfully i was able to meet up with some of my team members just before um, uh, this latest COVID outbreak so i was pleased that i was able to catch up with uh, many of them um, during that time but yeah if you would like more information i love people to have all of the um the information before making a decision please get in contact with me and I would love to have a chat with you um, and particularly too if you've got a large wish list it's the way to go because you will save yourself so much money and I want you to get the best value for your dollar too so all right in saying that let's flip the camera down and I'm going to show you what we're going to be playing with today um, yeah I, I'm excited about this today so let me get everything ready for you. I'm going to cover up the camera for a moment and flip it down. It might be a little bit noisy and clunky as I adjust my, um, my stand, my phone holder, to tip that down to the desktop. So bear with me for a moment and here we go. All right, first of all, I'll flip those cameras and now I'll position my camera for you. Okay, so let's see. Oh, I think we're a little bit crooked today. All right, I'll adjust my light so you can see what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'll be in the dark. There we go. Okay, oh, that's pretty good. All right, so if you are looking for any of these products, 
you can go to my blog and via my blog, let me just move that cable out of the way. Via my blog, you can actually find my online store. You can also find a joining link. So if you've decided already, yes, that sounds amazing. I want to join Stampin' Up! And I want to join Mandy's team. You can find a joining link at my blog as well. You'll find, it, you'll find the um, button for that up the top of my blog. Um, yeah, so if any of these products that I'm sharing with you today or anything else, um, you can go to my online store through mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com and then um, click on the shop button and that'll take you straight through to my online store. Be sure to use my current host code when you're shopping with me so that um, with orders over $50, I can send you out a thank you gift. I love to spoil my customers um, and I love to show my appreciation by sending you a thank you card um, and with orders over $50, I send a gift as well. So there you go. All right, so let me show you what we're going to be playing with today. Now, we've only got a couple more days left of this mini catalogue. This is going to be retiring on Wednesday. Um, so, some of the products in here have already sold out because they're in the last chance products. Some of these have carried over into the current annual catalogue, which is this one here. Okay, now mine has been spiral bound at my local um, stationers. I take it to office work, so I've got some fluff under there. Um, and I get a, um, oh no, I've got something sticky under there. Ah, oh, I'll have to clean that off later. Um, and I get a clear cover put on the front of mine as well. I do that just with the annual catalogue because it's so big and I like to be able to open it up flat and I'm always referring to this one all the time. So um, I get this one spiral bound. I don't with the little ones because um, they're much smaller and I don't need to. Anyway, okay, so what we are going to be playing with today is from the Dandy Garden Suite. Now, some of the products in the Dandy Garden Suite have carried over and some have already retired and some are available still um, at a discounted price. I love this suite. This is a beautiful suite. Um, and as demonstrators, we um, are able to get some of the products early before customers get them and the dandy garden suite was one of them that we were able to get before this catalog even launched to the public so we've had this one for a little um i've actually had this one for a little while and i absolutely love it now let me show you some of the products um, in the suite so we've got the two stamp sets um and they have a bundle so one of them has a die set available with it. One of them has a um, punch. I'm going to talk about those in a moment because I'm going to flip over the page so you can see a larger view on those. The um, dandy laser cut paper, which are great for overlays on your cards or in your scrapbooking, in your memory keeping. Um, these are still available and they are now reduced to $16. So they're still available. The Memories and More cards is what we're going to be using today. Now, I've put mine in one of our um, clear cases because you can purchase these clear cases separately. And I just cut the label off the packet and slipped it in the little front slip cover just so I knew which packet of um, Memories and More cards I had in there. This is what we're going to be playing with today. And these are still available and they are heavily reduced. They're now available for only $8.95, uh, $8.75, sorry, um, $8.75. Um, that's the Dandy Garden Memories and More card pack. And I'll give you the code for those. Um, if you have a pen handy, get ready to write it down. 154302. They were $17.50 and now they're reduced to $8.75. So they are half price. Um, Still available, only a couple of days left or while supplies last unless they sell out before then. And I don't know how many are left. So um, if you like what you see today, then jump on board and grab those straight away. Um, there were memories and more cards and envelopes that coordinated. Unfortunately, they've already sold out. And the cute little ladybug trinkets, they have sold out as well. So I won't be using those today. 
The um, Mossy Meadow braided linen trim, however, is still available and it's also reduced to $7.35. Sorry, my writing is a little bit messy there. It's probably a bit hard to read what I've written. $7.35 for the braided linen trim. Um, unfortunately, the Dandy Garden 6x6 designer series paper has also sold out. However, I may use some of that today. I've still got some of that left available. Um, but there's none on the website anymore. Um, it's sold out. But in saying that, um, what I'm doing today, you can do with any designer series paper. So I'll explain more about that afterwards. Okay. And that's also to why I brought out the um, In Good Taste designer series paper. Um, because you'll see that I've used mine quite a bit. It's I've got lots of bits and pieces chopped up in there. And there's still a few... Um, 12 by 12 pieces but any of these you can cut down to size for your memory keeping okay um, I'll just quickly show you the the two bundles that were in this suite so we've got the garden wishes bundle now the garden wishes bundle I have that um, right here oh I didn't pull the dies out actually I meant to go and grab the dies and I forgot um, I've got the stamp set here, but I do have the dies. I just didn't pull them out. Um, it is currently available with the, sorry, with the stamp set and the coordinating dies as a bundle at a reduced price. You save yourself 10% when you purchase the stamp set and dies together as a bundle. Now they have carried over into the annual catalogue. However, if you're purchasing them after this catalogue, this mini catalogue retires on the 30th of June, you will be paying full price for each of those because they won't be available in a bundle in the annual catalogue. Hey Jenny, great to see you. Yes, Megan, the ladybugs have sold out. I know, so sad. They were very cute, weren't they? Um, so yes, yeah, so they are carrying over both of those items are carrying over the stamp set and the dies but in the new annual catalog after the 30th of june they won't be available at the discounted price of the bundle okay so yes still available but if you love them i would advise you to get them now while you can get a discount on them so um yes now with the other bundle that is part of the suite this is the dragonfly bundle so you've got the dragonfly stamp set which i have right here and the coordinating dragonflies punch this is going to still be available as a bundle in the annual catalog okay so the dragonflies and the punch available as a bundle okay so um, that one is carrying over as a bundle, which is awesome. And I'm so thankful that um, Stampin' Up! did that. So that is really great. Okay, so that's an explanation of the, um, the products. I love even just the, the samples that are here in the catalogue. They're absolutely beautiful. And you know, so we're going to be doing a little bit of memory keeping today. Um, even though these are created as a card, you can use those layouts in your scrapbooking and your uh, memory keeping as well. You can just case the layout and then adapt it to the size of what you're working with, um, depending on how you're doing your, your memory keeping or scrapbooking. So um, yeah, just really beautiful. I'm actually going to leave that open. So here we've got the, the, um, the annual catalogue. Okay, so if you open up to pages 22 and 23 of your annual catalogue, that's where you will find the products um, that have carried over. Okay, so we've got the Garden Wishes stamp set. It tells you down here that the dies can be, it coordinates with the Dandy Wishes dies and the dies are on page 162. But as I said, once the mini catalogue um, sells out on the 30th, they'll be individual, uh, individually priced. Then you've got your, on page 23, you've got the Dragonfly Garden Bundle. So you've got the stamp set. Um, the punch you can also find in the back as well, but it does tell you that it is available as the bundle still down the bottom there. Okay, so if you're looking for them. And again, more samples, different ones from the mini catalogue. So if you're looking at the, cat, the, let's have a look and see how many there are actually, because we've got 
samples here so we've got one two three four five samples on this page five six seven eight nine ten eleven samples and then there's more on here 11 12 13 14 15 16 between the two catalogs and then where they show the dies and the or the bundle actually at the back there'll be another sample as well so heaps and heaps of inspiration there which is super exciting all right so what i wanted to talk to you about today was um memories and more cards so i'm going to be playing as i said with the dandy garden memories and more cards today with doing a little bit of memory keeping so i thought for a change we'd look at memory keeping because i th i just think at the moment it's a really great time to be doing some memory keeping we've all got a lot of extra time at home at the moment um, and I just thought what a great thing and this is something too that if you do have children or grandchildren that you can get them involved with this as well um, it can be as simple or you can make it as complicated and detailed as you want to now I'm using these ones because um, I've still got them in my stock and they're retiring soon however we do have current memories and more cards i'll just put those ones to the side for a moment we do have current memories and more cards available at the moment in the current annual catalog um, and this new one i haven't finished putting all my tabs in yet so i have to find them oh look at that i did that pretty easily <laughs> amazing um, page 127 of your annual catalog you will find all the memories and more products there okay so we've got a couple of sets of memories and more cards um that we've got the what a year memories and more card pack i don't have that one yet i do have the hand penned memories and more cards though they are beautiful um there's also coordinating cards and envelopes that coordinate with the hand penned set if you would like to use them to make cards out of your um memories and more cards and you might have seen some facebook lives i've done before i've actually used the memories and more cards to make some cards um, and i did use this set just recently as well the hand penned to make up some beautiful cards we've then got the um, basic black six by eight album which is a ring bound album i um, i'll show you that today uh, then you've got the variety pack of pocket pages and they fit into the six by eight album um, and then you've also got assorted um, basic white memories and more cards and envelopes so um, you can use either of these packs and these cards card bases and envelopes are made specifically to fit the size of the uh, memories and more card packs so the memory and more cards that you get in the pack you have the large ones that are six by four so like a photo size um, oops and you get stickers in there too which is awesome in every pack so you've got the large six by four cards and then you've got a whole heap of the smaller three by four cards and I'll show you different ways of using those today now you can also use these like designer series paper as well so you can cut these up just like you would designer series paper so you can um, embellish your um, your memory keeping album your scrapbooking album um, or again with cards all right so let me just pop this to the side I should put a sticker in that one too so I remember where that is I just happen to have one handy there we go in case we've got to refer back to it okay so with the cards as I said you get all of these and I've already used some of these just to let you know as well this isn't a full pack um, because I have been playing with these for quite a while and I did some um, with my card making before as well. So we've got this whole stack of um, the three by fours. You do get duplicates in there as well of each of the cards, okay? So you'll notice that um, you get two of each and that is because they are double-sided. So you might like that pattern, but you might also like that pattern. So they give you two, so you can use both patterns, okay? Um, some of them have got words on them so they're great for title cards journaling um, and that sort of thing and then other ones are more decorative cards then you've got these ones as well that have got lines on them that you can write some of your own journaling on there 
Then you've got large ones. So this is another journaling card here. Or if you didn't want to use it as a journaling card, you can put something over those lines um, to hide those and embellish that up. Okay, so you get, again, two of some of these ones. Sometimes, depending on the pack of um, cards, especially if it's one that has any metallics in it, you might have some metallics, um, some cards that have metallics on them. They'll usually be single-sided. So it just depends on the pack. The packs are always different. Um, but with, the, with this one, though, I think these ones are all double-sided. So I'll show you the front and the back. Oh, I missed that one. There's two of that one. Oh, that's the one I already showed you. And so you've got some of these as well that can um, you can use as like title cards. You could even hand cut that out, pop that up on dimensionals. You do have to be careful when you're doing any sort of scrapbooking or memory keeping. Keep in mind um, about the dimension that's in your album because um, depending on how much dimension you have in there and the embellishments you put in there, you have to be careful that it's not going to damage the photos that are on the opposite page when you close your album. Okay, and then I've got all these stickers as well. That's just a cardboard backing that came in the pack. I've got all of these stickers as well that I can use for embellishing. I think there's two of each sheets. So I've got some words here as well, which is fantastic. I've got some strips, some cute little bees, and then I've got all these floral images and some little labels. So I can either stamp or hand write on those labels. Okay. Now let me show you what else we have. I'll leave that open. because Let's show you the album. So when you get the album, the basic black 6x8 album, it comes packaged in a box like this. Okay, so it's really well protected. And let's see if I can get it open. So this one is brand new. Um, I haven't used this one yet, so you'll see exactly how it comes. Okay. So it comes packaged like this. You've got a book label on the side, so you can label what your album is. Um, the great thing I love about it being craft is that you can actually cover this with some of your designer series paper or cardstock. You can add ribbon. Um, all different sorts of things to embellish this up however you like or you can just leave it plain if you like the craft you can just leave it as it is so I'm just going to cut the plastic off the outside Oop. and get my hands in there to open that up there we go how about I might cut that a little bit more oops got my little trinkets caught up in my scissors there we go Another thing you could use these for is to keep recipes in as well. Recipes would be great for using this. Um, my Technique Club uses one as a resource folder. So we keep a res um, all of our Technique resources in here. We keep a sample of each, resource, uh, each Technique with instruction cards in there. And that's how we use this one. So you get this spare little piece of cardboard, which is just helping to keep it protected. And of course you get your little um, silica gel things in there so that that avoids any moisture. Be sure to throw them away safely so that no children or pets get a hold of those. Okay, and so then you've got the two ring binder. You've got the Stampin' Up! logo on the, um, the back cover there. And so that's how your album comes. The back is the same. Okay, one thing I love about the D-ring um, binders is that you can fit a lot in them. All right, and then you purchase your variety pack 6x8 um, photo pocket pages. So this is pocket page scrap. I like to call it pocket page scrapbooking. Um, it's a very simplified version of traditional scrapbooking. However, there is a crossover because you can embellish this as much as you like, just like traditional scrapbooking. All right, so in here, oh, I've already taken some of them out. Right. 
I was wondering about that, if it was going to be a full pack or not. I've got some spares in here as well. Um, so that wasn't a full pack because I've taken some of them out of there for my um, technique notebook. But let's just have a look and see what I've got in my spares here as well. But basically what happens is with the variety pack, you get all different configurations of the pages. So some pages will have, um, I'll show them to you separately actually so you can see them. Let's move that to the side. So some of them will have, it's a bit hard to see on that. Hang on. Let me use the back of my black folder. That might be better. So some of them will have the four um, three by four slots in them. Um, so we've got a few of those. Some of them will have two six by fours. So that fits your large cards and your large photos. Now, one thing I wanted to just say as well, don't be concerned that you can only use your large landscape six by four photos in here because you have the option of trimming them down okay to fit in the three by four you can cut them in half even to to split the photo across the two sections but we also have in there and the thing too that's good with these days is that a lot of our photos are digital as well a lot of people can are concerned about cutting their photos or used to be back in the day where photos were you know on film and you only got one to choose from and you know you were reluctant to cut it for fear that you damaged the photo it doesn't matter these days because everything is digital and so you've usually got a digital copy anyway so if something goes awry with you when you're cutting it um, you can just print another one so um, yeah and then we've got this one as well which is the full six by eight. So you can do a full scrapbooking layout with the six by eight um, pages as well. Angie says she wishes they still had the 12 by 12 pockets. Yeah, I do too, Angie. I've got actually got some of those to show everybody as well today um, of what we, what we can do with some of our, um, our memories and more cards. Um, but yeah, it's a shame that Stampin' Up! don't have the 12 by 12 albums anymore. Um, I find though that these ones are a good size too because they're really quick and easy. Um, so yeah, it just depends on what you like. Also too with these pocket, these um, full 6x12 pockets, you can use that as like a memorabilia pocket. So if you have a lot of memorabilia from a trip or you might have um, little bits and pieces of your children if you're scrapbooking your children or whatever, you can actually use them, um, you can use these uh, six by 12 pockets for that as well so Angie says she's used all hers up she needs heaps more oh well, there you go Angie all right so I've got a whole heap of spare ones here I'm just having a look to see what configuration I've got so these ones are all the um, four by fours and I've got some more of the the two six by so that's good because I'll use those ones up fantastic oh and I've got a spare um, full-size pocket as well so that's good there are some other configurations I'll grab my technique notebook I should have checked these before I went live actually but I thought that that other pack was a full pack turns out I was wrong but that's okay um, I'll pop, pop those ones that way so that I know they're the different configuration let me grab my other album okay so this is my technique notebook and what I did with this one is I stamped onto this one I pre printed this on the computer um, because this is for our technique notebook and then I just stamped on the corners to decorate that up and to put a little um, ribbon on there too so you can see how um, you can easily just decorate that up so yeah if you wanted to do something similar like that or you might like to use some of your beautiful patterned designer series paper to put on the front to cover your album as well so I'm just gonna have a little look in here to see if I've got oh I have great all right so I have got 
oops I'll just unclip that I'll pop that down I've got some of the I'm gonna have to buy some more too I think I've got some of the other configurations so that I can show you what is actually available yep there we go all right snap okay so in the pack you will also get some pages like this that have the two three by fours at the top and then the six by four at the bottom so you get several of those in the pack and then this one is the opposite so you've got the six by four at the top and then the two oh no hang on that one's upside down wait on no that's the same wait hang on a minute no it's not no that was right yes oh it's okay I was looking at the logo, the Stampin' Up! logo, and I had it back to front. So you can always tell which way the pages go because the Stampin' Up! logo is silver on the front side and on the back side it's very dull and it'll be back to front anyway. So there we go. Um, so this one has got the 6x4 at the top and then the two 3x4 um, pockets at the bottom. Okay, so the cards and your photos slip in there easily. Um, so it's really easy to um, pop them in. So I'll keep out some of those ones as well so we can use some of them too. Okay. Now, one thing I was going to quickly show you is when Stampin' Up! had the... Um, they used to have... Whoops, I just knocked my light. They used to have these very big 12 by 12 albums. Well, the pages inside are 12 by 12 the outside is actually larger than 12 by 12. Um, sadly, that they don't stock them anymore. However, they will stock products if they are popular. So if um, this is something that you are interested in, um, let me know because I can actually let Stampin' Up! know that my customers would like the 12 by 12 albums to come back. Now, if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, um, you probably already know about the... Um, the sandbox that we can pop ideas and suggestions into if you want the 12 by 12 albums to come back jump in the sandbox and pop that in there so that Stampin' Up! will hear us and um, and bring them back so this is a layout I did when I very first joined Stampin' Up! because this is the reason why I joined I was doing um, I had discovered the pocket page system of scrapbooking I used to be a traditional scrapbooker with the full 12 by 12 layouts and everything but I found that when I went to um, when I started working I no longer had time to do that anymore because I would spend anywhere from 6 to 12 hours on a layout and I just didn't have that time anymore while I was working then I discovered the pocket page system and I thought oh brilliant I can still um, record my memories and still um, you know but do it in a much quicker fashion so I just wanted to show you a couple of layouts that I did these are the these were the first ones that I purchased through Stampin Up when I first joined um, and this yeah as I said this is the reason why I joined originally because there was a lot that I wanted and um, to start my memory keeping and I had a really big wish list and at the time the demonstrator I was using she she said to me do you realize that you know by joining Stampin Up you can get all of these products at a discount and so I thought well that's a brilliant idea so <laughs> that's what I did um, so this was um, the first set that I used and as you can see we've got the three by four pockets here and then the six by four pockets I've done some I'm having trouble fitting this, this is so big I'm having trouble fitting it at, on my whole screen um, I've got a journaling page down the bottom here or a journaling um, pocket down the bottom here and this is my daughter um, and I Brooke my daughter Brooke and I uh, this is one of the times we went to the zoo um, uh, she loves animals and so we love doing animal and I do too so we love doing animal um, adventures together so then so that one oh, actually sorry I'll go back to this one so here you can see what I've done is I have just popped the cards in I've simply popped the cards in, I stamped, I had an, um, a date stamp at the time which I just stamped on the journaling card and I just wrote my journaling. I just kept this one very simple and easy, okay, which is easy to do. If you don't have a date stamp, that's okay, you can just handwrite it. 
So if this is something that you like, um, or if you're doing it with children, this is great a great way to do it. Just keep it simple. Just use the cards, use your photos. They're your focal point. You can see I've cut these ones down. Sometimes you get photos that have got a lot of background that are not the focus of the photo. So in these cases, that's what I've done here is this, these were the, this is the focus of the photo is Brooke and I with the city in the background, which is kind of hard to see in this photo because it was a bit of a hazy day. Um, but yeah, so I just cropped all that other busy stuff out of the photo um, and just had us in there. And the same with this one, the focus of this one was the giraffe. So I cropped out all of the other stuff that was in the photo and just cropped that down to three by four. So when I say crop, that means just cut it down if you're unfamiliar with that terminology. Then I did, this is Brooke's first love, is dolphins. Um, and currently she works with the dugong and she's hoping one day to be able to work with the dolphins. So this is one of her trips to SeaWorld on the Gold Coast. Um, and this time she actually went with her cousin um, and her uncle and aunt not with us um, but in this one you'll see with this layout what I did is I did um, I used my wink of Stella on the happy little moment so I'm not sure if you can see that in there just to sparkle that up a little bit and then with this card here this one had the dots on it in the background I just wink of Stella all of those dots and then I made this little label to go over the top um, which is the name of the dolphin that she had her encounter with, which was Bala. Um, I had this little punch from years ago, which was a little dolphin punch from years and years and years ago before I was with, that's probably from when I very first started crafting, like um, 20, 21 years ago, um, which I, I kept all of those. <laughs> so I added that there as well. And then we've got the little journaling. Um, the next page I sort of kept very plain as well. But yeah, really, just to show you, you can go, you can go crazy. You can do whatever you like. Um, this one, I, I had a little wood embellishment, so I added that little wood embellishment just to, and I added um, Tyson's name. Tyson is um, the dolphin that Brooke absolutely loved. Sadly, he's passed now, um, but that was the first dolphin that she ever met. She. That was the first one who she ever had an encounter with and that's where her love of dolphins started and that's when she decided um, that she wanted to be a, um, she wanted to work with marine mammals. So yeah, Tyson has always been very special to her. So anyway, so just, I just wanted to give you a, a little idea of, here's another one that I did of um, Molly, our little Molly who passed away in December. A lot of you will have known about Molly. Um, and again, I just had a journaling card. I did my journaling and then I had some punches. So I just added some little punches of some butterflies, some flowers and a little bit of bling there to just bling that up a little bit. I've, I've also daubed some um, dots in the background and I've done a little bit of inking, a little bit of daubering with my ink around the edges of that journaling card. So yeah, so you can really do as much or as little as you want with these memories and more cards. They're beautiful just as they are. Here's another one where I've added some bling and some punches. Um, yeah, you can really do as much or as little as you want with these. So I just think that they are a great way to go. Um, I've got other ones in here I've done as well. A lot of these I've kept. We've got some Hawaii ones in here. I had a lot of photos from Hawaii and I haven't finished um, scrapbooking these ones either because I just had so many. And so a lot of these layouts I've just filled with photos. These ones, these pages don't even have journaling on them. Um, these other ones do um, prior to there. But yeah, even with some of these, I did some printing on the computer. So if you don't have, if you don't like your handwriting, you can print something up on the computer, cut it out with your, um, either with one of your um, punches or your dies or even just in strips from your trimmer and just add them to your, um, your album. So there's a few ideas. Um, we'll go ahead now and have a little play with what I've got for you today. 
Now I have to admit, I haven't done any scrapbooking or pocket uh, memory keeping for a really, really long time because I've been spending so much time just with my... Um... Oh, Angie says, great idea making a technique book. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's a great resource to have, Angie. And when you get in a bit of a... Um, a bit of a mind blank about you know what you want to do on a project or whatever it's a great resource to have just to go back and go oh yeah that's that technique yeah i might use that on my next project um yeah so it's really fantastic to have that and so each month when i have my technique um my technique club class we make a little race a little um sample to go into our resource folder or our technique notebook as we call it um judy says great that you can add photo pages into your journey pages yes it is because you can add as many pages as you can fit in basically it will depend on how bulky your um layout is so if you're adding additional layers or you're doing a lot of dimension um then obviously you'll fit less pages in um but yeah they do fit a lot in them uh, Megan said, did you go to the zoo in Hawaii? No, we didn't actually, Megan. Um, my daughter was a little bit, um, I guess she knows Taronga Zoo in Sydney really well. Um, she used to volunteer there and she just, she's, her standards, let me just say her standards are very high of her expectations of um, the care that the animals receive. And she was just a little bit hesitant. So she didn't want to go there because <laughs> she just wasn't sure what she would see and she was worried that she might get upset. So, yeah. All right, so I've got all the pages here. I think I'm gonna keep them separate over to the side. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to order them into the co different configurations that I have just so that I can, and then I'll keep my pile separate so that I can grab the ones that I need as I'm doing them. So if you're, if you're putting together these albums, if you're able to, it's a great idea to grab a pack, a couple of packs at a time. Um, but certainly you can just start with one pack and then as you need another pack, you can just pop another order in um, to get some more, but you will fill them up pretty quickly. Um, they're quite affordable, the packs of, just sorting these ones out, there we go. So I've got the four, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. There's five different configurations of pages. All right, so I'm going to lay these out at the side so that I can, and I'll show you the photos that I'm going to use today. Now, I, as I said, I was going through a lot of the photos this morning, um, well, today actually, the, I spent hours doing it, going through some photos of my children, some photos of my family growing up, um, and so I had a lot of photos, but what I discovered was the photos that I had in my photo boxes were a little bit random, um, because I've got old style um, photo albums for my children's photos and most of them are in there but I did have some random ones that hadn't been put in and some that came back to me from my mum when my mum passed away and when I was going through this box of photos so these photos I'm going to show you now actually I'll put the album aside for the moment these photos I'm going to show you now are actually of my family growing up um, now I've got more photos of my family growing up, but they're either in albums or they're in another box. These ones I discovered when I was going through them have come back to me from my mum, I'm pretty sure. Um, or there might be some random ones I've thrown in the box when I've been going through other things. So I kind of, I had just before I went live, and this is why I was a few minutes late today, just before I went live, I had them all over my desk here and I was sorting them out into piles between um, photos of my, myself, photos of my sibling, with me and my siblings, photos of my siblings before I was born, because I'm the youngest by five years, um, and there's five of us. And then, so I had all of these piles of photos and then there were random ones of family friends and I thought, oh, well, they're not going to interest any of you. So 
<laughs> I'll keep those ones for another day. I found some great ones of my dad. Um, those of you who know me already know this, but some of you may not know, um, I lost my dad when I was only six years old. So I grew up with just a mum. Mum never remarried until she was in her 70s and had moved back to Mildura in the country. Um, so yeah, so I grew up without a dad. Um, and so any photos that I have of my dad are really precious. And I found these two. Um, and I will talk to you more about those as I'm scrapbooking them. So I was deciding which ones I was going to put into these albums and which ones would coordinate nicely with these cards. And I think these ones are great because they're older photos too. And those colorings in them, I thought these, this packet of cards will just be um, perfect for these ones. So that's why I'm using these. Now, some of you may know if you're my age or older, Back, back in the day when I was young and before I was born, the photos came like this. So there would be a square photo and then at the side you'd get these two little proofs. I mean, these ones aren't the right, these proofs I'm putting here aren't the right ones. They don't coordinate with this big photo. But you, they used to come like that. So you get the square photo and the two little ones as well. So I've got a whole heap of these little ones that I've cut off the original big one. And I thought, um, and I've got these big ones scrapbooked elsewhere, um, but I thought I might be able to use these little ones in this album as well. So I think they would be really fun. I'll need to trim them up a little bit, of course, but I thought they would be really fun to scrapbook those little ones as well. Look, this one, I'll hold this one up. This is me when I was just a little baby. So cute. Has a bit, it's a bit hard to see because I was, you know, it's a really old photo, so the quality wasn't that great, but that was me as a little bubba. So anyway, I thought that, and there's some of me here going to school. I mean, the photos, because then we moved to the 70s and in the 70s, you got the rounded corner. You had the color, you know, the beautiful color photos, but you had the rounded corner square photos. Um, so there's a few of me there, my first bike. Um, yeah, and actually there was one of my cats in that too. That was our cat, um, Jet. That was my brother's cat. He was a lovely cat. He was such a smoocher, that one. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I thought I'd start with, with some of these older ones. This is my first birthday photo. So I thought that would be a nice one to scrapbook. I think I've got one of the... There was a couple of these, a couple that were a little bit different, and I think I've got one of these um, scrapbooked somewhere else as well. And then I've got some other ones that are random family photos. I've got myself with my siblings when we were younger. Um, oh, there's another one, another little one. Um, some camping photos when we used to, our family used to go um, camping. So we started out in tents and uh, until I was six months old, I had my first camping experience at six months old in a tent. And then after that, they got a caravan. So um, there's some caravans, there's an old Santa photo, there's some family photo. I found this one in my mum's photos and I don't think I've ever seen this photo before. I'd never, I don't remember this one at all. Um, there's little, little me over the back there with my brother and my other sister must have been the one taking the photo. But um, yeah, I've never seen this photo before, but this is in our old kitchen. And um, yeah, we, so it was just really amazing. And it must have been Christmas and this was my Christmas, but I remember this um, high chair for my baby alive. Does anyone remember the good old baby alive from back in the 70s, early early to mid 70s? I had a couple of baby alives because they kept breaking and one of them, its head kept falling off, not its head, the hair, the hair section kept falling off to reveal all the mechanisms in it. Those of you who don't know, baby alive was the first doll that ever, well, that I know of anyway, that used to eat and drink and would actually, um, wee and poop <laughs> so oh megan loved baby alive too yeah and we had a doll hospital near us too and i remember once my mum took baby alive to the doll hospital to get um repaired and i was so sad when she took my baby my baby doll away from me um so yeah just lots of really great photos um, this one was our trip to Mount Kosciuszko when I was little and I do have memories of this day when my dad was still alive um, 
and my dad climbed right up the top of this uh, this was the where the lookout is I think and this signified northeast west I think I don't know if that's still there I'm not sure what it was called but my dad climbed right up there and I remember at the bottom I was down there crying because I couldn't climb up I was too little I couldn't I physically couldn't get up there and I was crying because I wanted to climb up there with him um, so yeah just fun memories and this is before I was born uh, or I might have been a tiny baby but this is my dad and my brother my dad's brother uncle Robert uncle Robert is still alive and he's my only living uncle on that side of the family um, and that's their um, my two brothers and uncle Robert's um, four children so yeah this one's a really special photo too so yeah, just lots and lots of memories. Um, it's really great to look through old photos, but let me just um, I'll choose some of these to scrapbook. They're a bit more recent when we were a bit older. My sisters were in high school and I was still in primary school. I've got my primary school uniform on. That was obviously my sister Jenny's birthday. This one is my brother on one of his motorbikes. My two brothers had motorbikes and um, that's my eldest brother on his motorbike um, that's probably the one that I he took me for a ride on on the back and then crashed into a tree <laughs> I don't know if it was on purpose to scare me or if it was just by accident but uh, we didn't get hurt but it scared me I've never liked motorbikes ever since <laughs> and this is these are some really old ones of my dad with my my brother so my eldest brother the first born in the family um, and then my two brothers and my two sisters. How cute are my two sisters in their pretty little dresses? They're probably off to Sunday school or something. Um, there's my two sisters again. And there's my two sisters again. There are a lot of photos of me as a baby and, and a young child too, but I've scrapbooked most of them. Oh, no worries, Megan. Oh, yes, Megan. Fantastic photos. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Jenny. Yeah. Oh, Tina said she had the rubber dub dub uh, rubber dub dolly. Oh, I don't remember that one. That's cool. So this was our first caravan. Um, I must have been a baby, although Rosie looks really young there. I might not have been born yet. But this was our very first caravan. I remember it. It was a really really long um, caravan. I think it was like a I don't know 18 footer or something. I can't remember the dimensions, but it was a really huge caravan. I mean, there was five of us kids and two adults, so, you know. So, yeah, they're good ones to remember. And these two, ah, oh, so this was a trip to the zoo, I think, or an outing that my, um, my family had. I'm in there too, but you can't sort of see me, but you can see me holding up my teddy. That was my blackie teddy. He was my favourite teddy. I think that's my auntie. I have to check with my auntie. But look at this. My two sisters having an elephant ride at Taronga Zoo. And this was taken on the same day, I'm pretty sure. Or around the same time anyway. It might not have been the same day, but it was around the same time. They used to do elephant rides at Taronga Zoo. Um, nowadays, that's not ethically, um, you know, seen as being uh, kind to the animals. And of course, yeah, I agree. But back in the day... They did have elephant rides and I remember actually going on an elephant ride at the zoo one day too. So that was in this box of photos and I was like, oh my goodness, that photo. So that's that's an amazing memory too. All right. So I think I'm going to start with these ones because I really like these ones. And I like to do my photos in chronological order. However, um, this album might be a little bit of a, a hodgepodge but the good thing is too with the pocket pages is you can take them out and move things around um oh no worries no worries megan um and i like these ones of my dad too so my dad um i'll show you this one first my dad used to be an industrial engraver and so this one was when my dad used to have his um, engraving business in the back room of our home in South Hurstville. So that's when mum and dad moved to Sydney um, for dad to, to start his business up here in Sydney. So I think I could use a, yeah, so I could use one of these pages. Now, of course, this one is going to be, because this is an original photo, 
Um, I don't want to, I think this one is an original. I don't want to cut this one down. This is my original photo of my dad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the six by four pockets, but I'm going to put um, one of the memory cards or some designer series paper at the back there um, to fill in that space. You could even put it to the side and put a little bit of embellishing at the sides if you wanted to. Um, now what I've also got here uh, um, to embellish more so if I choose to. Now you don't have to, you can just use the Memories and More cards on their own. As I said, you can keep it as simple as you like or you can go crazy and um, embellish it as much as you like. But I do have my two stamp sets there and I've got my punch that coordinates with my dragonflies and I've got the dies over in my um, tub over there. And I've got the coordinating designer series paper here as well, which sadly is sold out. Um, but in case I don't have the right card um, for what I want, I can cut some of the designer series paper. Now, if you don't have the coordinating designer series paper, we do also have um, the designer series paper packs in the color ranges. So I've got the um, 2021 to 2023 in color pack and I've got the subtles range as well. So I pulled them out as well because I thought some of these colors might coordinate nicely. Um, so you've got four different patterns in these papers. They're double sided. So you've got um, a pattern on one side and then the different patterns on the other sides. Okay. Oh, they're the same. Where's the other one? There it is. Sorry, I'm showing you the same thing. There we go. So that one, and then you've got those two patterns as well. So these are great for a project like this as well because they're they're plain, so you can get the colours that match in with the colours of your Memories and More cards that you're using. And as I said, these are available in each of the colour ranges and you'll find them in the annual catalogue. So have a look for um, the Designer Series Paper Packs. And also too, I've got a black, um, a basic black stamp and write marker here as well to use for my journaling. Um, the code for these, if you're looking for these, is one triple zero eight two. They're only five dollars twenty five. Now they have a brush chip on them, which you could use for your titles if you have nice um, writing and you like to do your own titles. You could use the brush tip, or for your actual journaling. Um, you can use the fine tip as well. Okay, so that's the black stamp and write marker. Alrighty, let's choose some cards that will go with this picture of my dad. Now I'm going to get a piece of, where are we, grid paper, just to help that stand out a little bit better. Hopefully that'll stand out a little bit better. So I've got dad there. Let's see which memories and more cards we have. I'm going to separate my um, my sticker sheets here. So I'll separate those two sticker sheets. There we go. Um, the reason I'm starting with this one is because this was before any of us kids came along. Can you see that? Have I got that too low? Um, so mum and dad started up the business in the back room of the house. Um, then dad moved the business down to our garage. We had a really big garage down the back of the, um, the backyard. It was a very long garage. So dad had his workshop, workshop up one end and then the car could be parked at the other end. Um, and then when he got too big for the sh uh, garage, then he moved to um, an industrial area in Peakhurst. So, um, yeah. Oh, no, actually, before that, he went to an industrial area at Blakehurst and then he went to Peakhurst. And Peakhurst is where I remember. I remember the, um, the factory there at Peakhurst. So I'm just having a look to see which one of these would be appropriate. That would be nice, that one. Let's have a look. Let's stick that in there and see then if the photo, if I attach the photo, that would be a good one because it's nice and plain. doesn't take away from the black and white photo because, of course, the black and white photos back then, they weren't great quality. Um, so, you know, I don't want anything too busy to take away from the photo of my dad. Oh, there's this one too. This one could be nice as well. 
that one. There's also that one. Oh, that one. That one's got the border all the way around, and so this is only a square photo, so that would leave a little bit, a little bit around the edges. So yeah, there's lots to choose from. It's a journaling one. Um, that one could be good too. Oh, is that another sticker sheet? No, that's got. Oh, that's that one. Okay, so let's have a look at that one. And that's the one we've got. All right. So we've tried that one. I'm just going to slip them in one at a time just to see which one I like the best behind that photo. And then I will attach it all. And so you could put it over to the side and put a little bit of a blurby blurb there too. Of course, I would um, make sure that my border is around the, the photo. I like that one. And then there's this one too, which makes the photo pop a bit more, doesn't it? Maybe that one would be good because that makes the photo pop a bit more, doesn't it, rather than having it on a white background. Yeah, I like that. All right. Oh, we've also got this one too. This is a good one as well. It's got a more bold sort of pattern. But it's a good deep colour, which will help that photo to stand out. I like that one too. All right. So I'll I don't know why I popped them in the pocket actually to, to check which one is gonna go with it. I didn't have to put it in the pocket, I could have just laid it on, couldn't I? <laughs> All right, so I'm choosing between these two. Let's see. So there's that one. But if I if I have that over to the side, I need to make sure I cover up that there. So I either have that one in the middle or have that one same with that one actually I'd need to have it in the middle have it over to the side to have it in the middle that one or that one I think I like that one because the detail on it's a little bit more subtle and it doesn't take away too much from the photo okay so now you can do two things if you are um, because this is an original photo, as I said, if you're if you're um, if you're scrapbooking current photos that are digital that you can reprint and everything, that's okay. If you're doing older photos, then that's when you need to be really careful about cutting them, um, because they are an original. Unless you've got the film and you can get the film developed, I don't have for this one. So I want to be really sure with this one that when I adhere it, I'm not going to be wanting to remove it. All right. Um, oh, I, I understand what you meant, Megan. Your son is going to the station for you. Oh, that's good. Oh, thank him for me. <laughs> um, yeah, so just being careful. Now, you've got a couple of options. You can use mini glue dots, which if you decide to remove your photo um, for whatever reason, this would be the way to go because um, they're easier to remove. If you are sure that you want them to be attached um, permanently, you can use the um, double-sided tape. Now, the Stampin' Up! double-sided tape um, is extremely sticky. So once you adhere anything with this, it's not going to move, okay? So be sure if you're going to use that. We've also got the Stampin' Seal and the Stampin' Seal Plus. The Stampin' Seal Plus um, is, well, both of them are actually very sticky. Stamp and Seal Plus, nothing is going to budge with that either, okay? So just be really sure about when you're adhering your photos. Um, I advise against using any liquid glue because it could damage your photos, all right? So you're better off using a dry glue. So what I'm going to use, I've decided to use my mini glue dots. Another thing you could do actually is you could use photo corners. So you can just, um, if you've got square dies, you can... Um, die cut a square die and then cut it diagonally in half to create a photo corner and then that way you can just slip your photo into the photo corners. If you're using photo corners I advise you to put the photo corners on your photo first and then position your photo and adhere the corners down so that you know that you've got those photo corners spaced out um, at the correct um, spacing 
to fit your corners in so that your um, your photo isn't buckled so that it sits nice and flat but I'm going to use glue dots and when you are using um, when you are doing any photos, especially with these old photos that are original, it's really important to make sure that your products are acid and lignin free um, so that that doesn't affect your photos and damage them. Okay. Really important. The acid free is very important. Be careful too that you have really clean hands, free of any oils, moisturizers, etc. Um, if you're doing your memory keeping, you certainly do not want to be getting any of that onto your, your photos and marking your photos. And sometimes with some of those oils and things on your hand, you might not see it on your photo straight away. But over time, as the photo ages, um, it can actually show up. So, all right. So I'm going to put this in the middle to cover up that sentiment, the weekend getaway, because I don't want that sentiment. So I'm basically going to put this... Um, in the middle there so middle side to side but of course the border top and bottom is going to be um, a bit narrower but that's okay oops oh good thing about glue dots is you can lift them up and reposition I popped that down a little bit too quickly all right there we go okay so that is my first one so now I'll pop that into my album my um, pocket page and then some of these have got a little bit of... Now, because these are, are plastic, of course, with any pocket, um, traditional scrapbooking or pocket page scrapbooking, because they're plastic, they can be a little bit staticky and you can get a little bit of fluff and things like that. So just be careful that as you're putting your photos in, um, you don't transfer any fluff or dust or anything in there with them. If you do, just gently wipe them out. Be careful about wiping them with any tissue because tissue can um, has a lot of lint so um, the best thing to use is like a sunglasses cleaning cloth or something like that um, or a microfiber cloth to remove any of the um, the lint or the dust because um, that'll avoid any static all right so now we need two little cards up here one for journaling because i want to journal about my dad's um, engraving like i just told you i just told you the little story about that and then i want um one for embellishing as well so let's see the bees aren't appropriate yet um, so some of these are great for card making as well now of course some of the sentiments go this way okay or some of the the designs go this way which of course for these pockets that's not going to work because the design is going the wrong way However, I can use these in another way. I can cut these up. I can use them on top of one of the six by four pages and have them down here with a small photo or something like that, or over here with a little bit of journaling. You can use that in the bottom pocket page as your journaling page on top of the other six by four and then add some ribbon and embellishing or whatever you'd like. Um, so yeah, so just be aware of which way your design is going so just now also to if you don't have a sentiment that is appropriate for your photo um, you can always stamp one with your stamp sets and then um, punch that out perhaps with the label punch or one of your dies and then pop that in I like that one this is our happy place because that was mum and dad's first home together and that was dad's first business that's the first place that he had his business so i think that one works beautifully this is our happy place now i need a card for journaling so now i'll look for one that i can write my little story on there and again if there's not one i can just use a piece of cardstock or i can um look even that one i could use that one and i could Put something over it says today's was amazing but I could put something over the top of that if I wanted to use those lines for the journaling or I can use that one which has got the crisscross lines because these ones they've got the crisscross lines so you can either write on them that way or you can write on them that way doesn't really matter you can use them either way I'll leave that one out too 
Now remember that these Memories and More cards that I'm using today are the Dandy Garden Memories and More cards and they're on special at the moment for 50% off and they're only $8.75. So um, the code for these, if you would like the code for these, it is 154302. So if you like these, then um, definitely go ahead and grab some of those. You can use that one. So many to choose from. I might even end up just using a piece of um, Whisper White cardstock. And you know what else you can do? If you prefer to type up your um, journaling, you can actually type it up on the computer and print it out onto your cardstock and then um, cut that down to um, three by four to fit in your pocket, which Let's see, that one or that one or that one. That one kind of goes with that. Yeah, that one. I really like this one, though. I like that one, but it's exactly the same as this. So um, it's up to you if you want two exactly the same or if you want one a little bit different. Actually, let's see wash that one would look like that's a that's a, more of a plain yellow one with yeah I was hoping to have a different color on there actually so what I might do is I might actually print the um I might actually type up my well what about that could I get away with that if I put something over the top of that I was just thinking I might type up my um, story, my journaling, and actually pop it in there. Or I might use a bit of um, designer series paper, uh, a bit of cardstock or designer series paper. I'm just thinking which way I could do it. I might actually cut down a piece of, I'll do it now. I'll cut down a piece of white um, yes. Okay. I've got an idea. All right. All right. I'm going to get a piece of Whisper White, um, cardstock and we're going to cut it down to three by four to fit in there. And then we're going to embellish it with some of these, um, the, we're going to cut up some of these memories and more cards to embellish it. And then we'll pop that in there and I'll show you how we can do that. Okay. I just need to just one moment and I'll grab some cardstock. actually have I think I said whisper white cardstock I mean basic white cardstock I just opened my first pack of basic white cardstock um, yesterday we finally used up all of the um, whisper white that we had and um, now we're on to the basic the basic white which is the current white that is available all right so let me just move that to the side for a moment and I'll bring in my cardstock now I'm just going to, oops, first of all, I'm just going to cut this in half at 14.85. And then I'll do it again at 10 and a half so that I've got two card front size pieces. That's how I always like to, um, the purple card to match the sentiment. Ah, good thinking, Tina Marie. Yes. Good thinking. So now I've got these pieces to use later on. Um, now this piece is the one I'm going to cut down to three by four. So I'll do, let's see, how wide is that in inches? That's just under six. So it's five and, it's about five and three quarter-ish. So I will cut it down to, let's see if I go that way. I'll cut it four inches that way. Now, of course, I'm working in inches um, and then three inches this way. I'm working in inches. Um, if you need the centimetre conversion, let me know. But usually with a lot of the time with photos and um, photo journaling and things like that, we tend to work in inches. It's just what we do. On our Stampin' Up! paper trimmer, we do have the centimetres and the inches measurements. So that makes it super easy to use either. Um, Okay, so three inches is 7.6 centimeters 
and 4 inches is 10.15 centimeters. And then if we're talking about 6 inches, so if we're talking 6 by 4, 6 inches is 15.25 roughly. Yeah, 15.25 centimeters. So there you go, there's your conversion. Oh, we'll leave this here because we're going to... All right, so I've got a piece of um, Whisper White to start with. Now, Tina Marie suggested the purple one to match the sentiment, which is a great idea. Um, so we've got that one. Let's see which else we had in the purple. We had that one. In fact, I could almost use that one and just cover that up. Or I could use the strips from that. I could cut the strips from that. Let's see, did I have anything else in the purple? Oh, I do, I've got that one. Oh, I missed that one. I could have used that one. That's okay. I'm gonna show you how to make one. I might use that one for one of the other pages. Um, I missed that one when I was going through them. That's okay. So let's see, yeah, okay, good. That's those ones. And let's see what we've got in the big ones in the colors we've got a purple one here as well which has got that's got a nice border around it so we could even cut the edges of this one and use the strips um, if we wanted to but we've got more of the little ones so i would prefer to cut down the little ones i think yeah okay that's what we'll do all righty so i think i'm going to cut this one I'm going to save this one because this is a really good journaling card and I could have used that one. That one would have looked really good in there. That one would have looked perfect actually. I might even end up using that one, but I'll show you how to make your own um, just so that you know what you can do. So basically, um, let me actually measure the width of the strips on this one because I'll make one similar to this to show you. That is, oh, I picked up the silly ruler. I don't like that ruler. I like this one. So this one is it's a one and a half centimeter strip, top and bottom. So let's just take this memory and more card, and we're just going to cut. Um, oh, I like the sentiment too, so I might reserve the sentiment. So I'm just going to cut two one and a half centimeter strips. Now I'm working in centimeters this time, not in inches. So we'll go to one and a half centimeters. So there's our first strip and we'll do another one, one and a half, one and a half. There we go. So I've reserved my sentiment and I can use the rest of that pattern there and I can use the rest of that pattern there, but I want to reserve that sentiment because I might be able to use that sentiment. Um, if I cut that out, I could use that on one of the other pages. So I'll keep that. Okay, great. So now I've got these two strips um, and I can just attach them to my Whisper White um, cardstock and I'll use a bit of, what will I use? I think I'll use tear and tape. So I'll just put a piece of tear and tape um, along the top and the bottom there. So with your tear and tape, I always say it does tear. I usually cut mine because I've always been a cutting girl, but I'm kind of trying to go a bit quicker now because I just looked at the time and realized how late it was. But I hope that um, in this, I've given you a few ideas of what you can do with pocket page um, scrapbooking or memory keeping, whichever you prefer to call it. Um, yeah, just to give you another idea of uh, a way that you can use your Stampin' Up! products. And of course, you know, all the products that you still have, all of your stamps, your dies, your punches, they can all be used in your um, pocket scrapbooking. Oop. All right, so I'm just going to line that up at the top there. All right, and then we'll do the same with the bottom. I'm really excited by this album now. I really want to um, do all of these photos. They are a bit of a hodgepodge of events, um, but I'm not too worried about that because it's still family memories. So um, 
yeah, I really want to get them into an album now, now that I've gone through them. There we go, beautiful. So now I can pop that in there and I can write my journaling on there. Now, if you prefer to um, draw lines, I usually do because otherwise I don't write straight. Um, so I would probably rule lines. You can either rule lines with your black stamp and write marker or you can rule lines with a pencil if you want to rub them back out again. So either way would be fine. And then I'm going to put my journaling in there. Now I've got some um, stickers here as well that I can use to embellish. So, and I can do more down here as well. So let's see, um, what have we got? We've got these and we've got, so, oh, you know what I might do? I might get some of my trim Haha, ha, I've got an idea. I'm going to get some of my trim. This is my uh, Mossy Meadow braided linen, linen trim. And I am going to put some around here. I think I'm going to do two strips around there. Do I want to do two strips or do I do want to do one and then tie a knot? I might do like a, a book binding one. So I might, yeah. I might just tie some of this. I'll cut this here. So again, if you missed it before, this one too is also retiring. Um, the Mossy Meadow braided linen trim and it's currently reduced to $7.35. So it's um, at a good price at the moment too. So I'm gonna pop this one on here. Now remember that these cards are double-sided, so if the image on the opposite side is appropriate for your next layout, you can certainly um, just slip some photos onto the opposite side on of these. Oh, I should have tied that, cut that a little bit longer to make it easier for me to tie it. Um, yeah, you can certainly just pop your photos on the reverse side or, you know, use the layout that's on the opposite side of the card. But if it's not, just pop another card in behind it. Um, it's as easy as that. Sorry, I'm just trying to tie this, which isn't being too compliant. There we go. Oh, it's a little bit loose, but that's okay. You get the, the general idea. And then with my um, trim, I always like to roughen up the edges for that added bit of texture. Um, speaking of texture, you can also use your embossing folders in your memory kit your pocket memory keeping too there we go we'll move that up to the top a little bit now i'm going to leave that loose because um like i'm not going to attach it because on the other side you've got you've got that beautiful one there so i can probably use that with another photo on the other side and i can use that side of the twine now if i wanted to have another knot on the other side of the twine what i can do is i can cut a short piece of the twine or the trim and just tie it around that piece there and then you can create a knot there. Just if you are doing that, be sure that it's not in exactly the same spot as the knot that's on the front because otherwise it'll cause too much bulk in your album um, and it can also damage your photos. So there we go. So let's pop that one back in. So as I said, it can be as simple as you like or you can make it more detailed depending on how you like your album. Um, I was going to maybe put a little, um, let's see which one. I don't want to take up too much room because that's only a small journaling card. I might use one of these little stickers and I'm going to pop a little sticker. Oh, it would have been good to pop it in underneath the edge there actually, but I've stuck that all the way down now. And maybe have it coming off the edge like that and then we could do one at the top as well have that going there like that there we go and then I'll do I won't do my journaling live um, on camera I'll do that later of course because I need to think about what I want to write about my dad and his engraving business so there you go I could even use some of the stickers on this piece as well if you wanted to bring in the yellow um, so actually let's do that we could keep fiddling all day couldn't we <laughs> then you can add some bling if you want to um, 
which one will I add? I'll add the big one. Yeah, you can always add some bling if you want to. Um, totally up to you how you want to decorate your um, your pages. So there we go. So there's my first page. Now, of course, I can choose to do extra here if I want to, or I can just leave it plain like that. Um, I'll do my journaling. And then when you flip over to the other side, you've got a layout all ready to go. I could decorate the back side of this one if I wanted to use this as a journaling card on the opposite page. Um, you've already got this here ready to put your next photo on. In fact, let me grab a photo. Um, how would this one look on there? Let's see. That one would actually probably go really well. That one there would probably go really well with my dad picking the peaches. So it's my dad and I think it's my brother, my second brother, my second eldest brother, picking peaches there and our big peach tree down the back. Um, so yeah, and then I might add an extra little notch on there. And then we'll pop that into our album. So as you can see, like I fiddled a bit and I've talked a lot as I've been doing that, but you can actually put together an album really, really quickly um, with using those, those pocket pages and your um, Memories and More cards. So look out for the Memories and More cards range that we have. Um, there will be some more coming out. We've got our mini catalogue coming out in August, from the 3rd of August, and there will be some more um, Christmas themed ones coming out in August as well. If you like to scrapbook your Christmas photos, they're great ones to scrapbook actually because they've always got lots of happy memories around them. So um, they're a good one to do as well. Um, oh, I know, Tina Marie. I, I kind of thought that. That's why I didn't sort of stick it down yet. Um, yes, my dad and my brother picking peaches. Tina Marie has just said this one screams the peach sweet. I might even have to get my peach sweet out to scrapbook just that photo and um, do that one on its own on a separate layout. I think, yeah. I, I did think that as I put that in there, I thought, mm, peaches, yeah, I probably should be using the peach sweet, but I wanted to show how you can use the, the back side of your cards as well. So there you go. So I hope that that has given you a little bit of um, food for thought with uh, your memory keeping. Uh, and I hope that that has inspired you um, to do a little bit of memory keeping and, you know, just put in some of those lovely um, memories. Because do you know what? If we keep all of our... I was thinking about this last night when I was planning this for today. And I was thinking if we... Keep, yes, I've got all of these old photos, right, from my upbringing. But currently we use a lot of digital media, don't we, for our photos? If we keep all of, our, all of our photos on digital media and we never print them, if our phone goes kaput or something happens with the internet, if you don't have them backed up, they're gone for good. So it's a really good idea to print them. I've got to, when, when we're able to get back out again, I'm going to go and print a whole stack of photos because I've got so many to print. Um, and, you know, you need to preserve these memories because when your your photos are gone um, and you're gone and you're not there to tell your stories to your family um, you know your family will want to know about your life they want to know about their life growing up um, as they get older and you know stories like this I wouldn't have known about my dad's engraving business only that the stories had been told to me um, by my family because of course I wasn't around then if I don't journal that when I go, that memory will be lost and those memories will be lost and my children won't know about their grandfather. Um, so it's really important to write them down because, of course, my children never got to meet their grandfather and if I don't write it down, they will never know. And one day they might really want to know about their granddad. So, yeah, so be sure to um, do some sort of memory keeping. As I said, it can be as simple as you want it to be or as detailed as you want it to be but have fun with it get those memories down and um, you know enjoy it enjoy the time and what better time to do it than right now when we're all um, stuck at home 
All right, let me cover up the camera. I'm going to flip back up to um, my face so that I can say goodbye to you face to face. Just give me a moment and I'll get that ready. Okay, oh, I better flip the cameras. I nearly forgot. There we go. Okay, and adjust the lights. So I'm not in the dark. I've got, um, so most of you know, I lost my mum last year in February. And um, so February, uh, last year was a bit of a, a dark year for me. This year is, is a bit brighter. Um, but I keep a photo of her above my desk here all the time. It's a beautiful photo of her smiling. I'm going to try not to cry now. And um, yeah, I think she would be really happy for me to have scrapbooked that with my dad. So try and smile through my tears. <laughs> yeah, so I think that mum would be really happy that I'm um, scrap scrapbooking that. Mum and I were actually scrapbooking her um, photos. A couple of years before she got really sick, I taught her scrapbooking. I taught her, her card making as well. And I taught her scrapbooking and together we were scrapbooking her um, memories as well as of her growing up and and all of that. And um, so we were doing that, but we never got it finished. And unfortunately, when she um, passed away, I, I, the albums are safe, um, but they're not in my possession. They're with my sister in Queensland. And because I haven't been able to get up to Queensland, I haven't got them. But I know they're safe with her and um, I know that she'll get them to me as soon as she can um, but of course we haven't been able to to do that yet because I really want to finish off my mum's album for her so yeah sorry <laughs> I wasn't expecting that hang on a sec I get a tissue sorry I wasn't I wasn't anticipating that and I wasn't planning on talking about that <laughs> I've been so good holding it together with all these memories has actually been making me really happy but it does bring up those things. So anyway, um, uh, Megan said you can upload your photos and have them printed and sent to you. Good idea, Megan. Oh, thank you so much for reminding me of that. Yes. Um, so my daughters have actually had memory books made up um, in the past, but I do know too that you can actually have them printed and then have the prints sent to you. And do you know what, Megan? Thank you for that because I'm going to do that. I'm going to write myself a note right now to actually do that and get get them printed that way. So, um, uh, writing myself a note. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that this week. I'm going to get some printed and um, get them sent to me so that I can start scrapbooking them. Because now that I've started, um, I want to keep going with it. It's been so long since I've scrapbooked. Um, in saying that too, oh, Harvey Norman, do it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julie. Um, i write that down too. Um, in saying that too, oh, I was going to ask you, oh, and also Snapfish. Um, so I think there's probably a few different companies that do it. So I might just have a little look around or I might get my girls to do it for me, actually. Brooke's got the next few, few days off. Um and um, find out who does it at a good price and you know check out the quality and stuff too so sorry excuse me <laughs> um oh, kathleen says beautiful memories and they should be shown off in an album yeah you're right kathleen they should be and i'm endeavoring to get them done <laughs> so um what i was going to say too is i've shown that on um I've shown how to use the Memories and More cards. Um, if any of you are interested in um, potentially being involved in scrapbooking classes of traditional scrapbooking, um, please let me know because it is something, oh, now my nose won't stop running, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, because it is something I've been considering for a little while. Um, it's just, just not something that I've got up and running at the moment. Um, but it is something I've been looking at. So if any of you would be interested in doing scrapbooking classes with me, 
for traditional scrapbooking, 12 by 12 layouts, um, or even we could do smaller 6 by 8 layouts, whichever, um, please send me a message and let me know because if I get enough interest, um, I might actually start running some scrapbooking classes as well because I'd love to get back into my scrapbooking. Um, so yeah, oh, Julie said Snapfish actually has a sale on prints at the moment. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Julie. That's fantastic. Okay, I am noting that down. Thank you so much. So for anyone that's watching this, let me give you the date today. If in case you're watching this back later, it's the 28th of June, 2021. So um, yes, and also to Megan said she'd look around, Kmart and Big W do it as well, or might do it as well. Yep, yep. So there's lots of lots of different places that do the digital prints. Um, but yeah, having them sent to you at the moment, that would be awesome because of course we can't really go out and do those things right now. Um, yeah. So, um, the other thing I was going to say to you is tomorrow or I'm not sure about tomorrow specifically, but in the next couple of days, you might see me jump online again because tomorrow is my birthday and I have got a whole stack of beautiful cards that have been sent to me, but I haven't opened them yet. I'm waiting till my birthday tomorrow to open them. And so I'd love to share them all with you at, um, in some way or form. So as to whether or not I open them on a live or I just show them all on a live later, I haven't decided yet. But um, yes, so special week. I've got my girls home tomorrow. Um, my husband's working from home. My son um, still has to go to work because he's a store manager and he's got to um, be there and manage the store. So um, we'll do something in the evening. I think we're going to have a barbecue in the evening because of course we don't want to get takeout at the moment um so we'll probably have a barbecue and the girls are planning something special for dessert so that'll be nice so ah uh, thank you so much kathleen thank you i'm sure i will have a lovely day yeah yes megan definitely heaps safer getting your prints done and sent to you um rather than going to the shops definitely safer at the moment thanks megan thank you for your happy birthday wishes for tomorrow all right well i will let you all go it is wow okay i've been going for a really long time i'm sorry <laughs> but yeah i hope that you all really enjoyed that now that i've stopped crying let me take another happy snap with this one <laughs> And I'll be sure to um, finish my journaling. I'm actually going to do that now when I, um, when I finish filming. So have a great week, everyone. Um, whatever you do, wherever you are, stay safe. Um, protect yourself. Protect your families. Um, use this time to, um, you know, to be creative, to spend time with your family. Um, you know, get the board games out with your family if your family are all home as well. Uh, hopefully you'll find lots of fun things to do but remember I had all the suggestions at the beginning of my live today if you missed them be sure to go back and watch the beginning of the replay because we talked about lots of different ideas to um, keep everyone busy both ourselves and the children as well and there were lots of great ideas there so have a great week everyone I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday at the same time four o'clock Sydney time until then happy crafting everyone bye